Well, it wouldn't be a David Earl tutorial if Logic didn't get opened at some point. We've been using the Play Engine in standalone mode, but I want to give you some options on how you can use it within a digital audio workstation like Logic or Live or Pro Tools. The first thing we're going to do is create a multi-timbral instrument in Logic. Here's how we do that. A multi-timbral instrument means that the Play Engine is going to receive multiple MIDI channels, and on each MIDI channel we're going to have a different instrument from a different library. The first thing we need to do is actually create the track. So I'll go to Track, New Tracks, and choose Software Instrument. There is a Disclosure Triangle down below. If we open up Details and choose Multi-Timbral, then that means we're going to get 16 MIDI channels. You can choose as many as you like. I could type 4 if I wanted. But 16 is going to be the maximum number of MIDI channels we can have per port. Okay. I'm going to hit Create. I'm going to leave all of the outputs at Output 1 and 2 for now. We're not going to talk about multi-output yet. We'll talk about that later. Right now, we're just concerned about the MIDI getting into play. So I'll hit Create. Now, on the left-hand side of the screen, we see the original software instrument that was here when I opened up Logic. I'll get rid of that. Below that, it says Instrument 2, Instrument 2, Instrument 2. But next to that, in brackets, it has the MIDI channel that's going to be assigned. I'll go to the Instrument location on the channel strip, choose AU instrument, east-west, play, and I'm going to choose stereo output. Important to realize that multi-output is not the same as multi-timbral. If we say multi-timbral, we're talking about the MIDI channels coming in to control the different instruments within the play engine. If we choose multi-output, we're talking about the audio outputs of the instrument and how they're being seen by logic. So I'll choose stereo. All right, so here we have our play engine. We're looking at the player right now. I want to go to the browser and I want to start loading up instruments. So let's see, I'll take a cymbal on. Why not? I'll go to Ghost Rider. Maybe I'll load some drums. Now it asks me, do I want to add another instrument or do I want to replace the current one? I want to add. So it'll load the drum kit and the drum kit is going to be on channel 2. Maybe I'll go to Goliath and I'll choose Storm Drone. Again, replace the current, replace all of the instruments, or add. I'm going to choose add. I'll go to raw. Choose a American plucked banjo. It would be a very eclectic piece of music we're creating here. So there are four different instruments, and they have four different MIDI channels. The MIDI channels are shown in parentheses. One, two, three, and four. We can see the player changing in the background as I go between libraries. Now over in Logic, the first track is going to be assigned to MIDI channel 1. So when I play my MIDI keyboard, I hear the cymbal on. Now I'm going to go to channel 2. I get a drum kit. I'll go to MIDI channel 3. That's cool. So that's definitely Genesis from Goliath. And then I'll choose the banjo for channel 4. And there you go. That's how you create a multi-timbral instrument. Now, we can load up to 16 within the Play Engine and we would have 16 here in our host. If I open up the mixer in Logic, I'm going to hit this little button here, you'll note it still is only one channel strip. So it's important to keep in mind that all of the MIDI channel strips that we see in the window above are all playing the same instrument. Now one thing to keep in mind, if we were to look at the CPU usage, no matter what channel I'm on, You may notice that there's only one thread that's being used right now. So using the instrument multi-timbrally like this may look pretty slick and kind of a nice way to do things, especially if you had it multi-output as well. But I actually suggest against it if you're going to have many large instruments because they're going to use a single thread of your processor. And once you have a lot of instruments stacked on top of each other, it's just going to absolutely slam that one thread 
and you're not going to get as much CPU as you want to get. So to get the CPU that you want to get, you want to create a template where each channel strip has its own instance of play. Let's look at that next. 